In this video, we'll be going over NCS Plus, uh, some of the basic functions and workflow in, in this protocol in Sierra Summit 3.1. When you open a new study, you'll always be brought to the navigator where you can select either a study, which would be a custom group of different tests that fit your workflow, or you can go pick an individual nerve or muscle. If you're using NCS Plus, you'll have access to the nerves tab where you can quickly filter through your list of tests using either an anatomical region and or a nerve then pick the test that you want to do. You can pick more than one and in the order that you want to do them. So if I know I'm going to do a median width F wave combo test and a median sensory and hit OK, it puts those tests into my study window in the order that they were selected. From here, I can go right into testing. It's already set up now for my median width F wave. In that particular test in the trace window, I'll see the test name and then I'll see what sites are available in that test along the right hand side. I'm going to start by stimulating the wrist. Uh, before I go there, we'll show you kind of a, a basic layout that we're looking at here. Most of your common functions are available through the F keys or knobs on your base unit. And those are, of course, listed in the bottom of the screen. So all of the, all the seven F keys, what they do are listed here. And what the knobs do are listed here. Um, you have ability to change font sizes, etc., just by right-clicking your screen. You can change to a larger font size. Um, and most windows have, have the ability ability to pick a different font size. Um, so with the motor test, I'm all set to go. I can just start stimulating either with the stim troller, pushing the stim button on the stim troller or the yellow knob in the base unit to stim. And as I increase intensity, you'll see what's happening is it's showing me a trace history as I acquire data. So I can easily see if I'm getting super maximum response. Um, previous traces disappear into the background. I'm actually using the hold mmax function, which is F1. I have that turned on by default. What that's doing is always keeping the super maximal response as the selected response. So if I go ahead and actually decrease my intensity and get a smaller response, it actually doesn't keep that smaller response. It's going to keep the super maximal response. So that saves me some clicks of having to go back and pick a different response. You can easily toggle that feature on or off by pushing the F1 key. Um, when I get a response I like, I'm going to go ahead and hit store or um, the uh, select the next site with my mouse. You can hit store on the stim troller or on the base unit and that will take you to the next site. In this case, this test is set up with a wrist response and then it goes right into F wave. So it, it saves me some clicks and keeps things really simple. So I'm just going to go ahead and acquire some F waves. The pink knob is my cursor. So turning the pink knob or just clicking and dragging cursors with your mouse. And I'm happy with that F wave, so I'm going to go ahead and hit store to take me to the next site, which in this case takes me back to my motor elbow. And that go ahead and it puts everything in order, so it's going to put the elbow right below the wrist in the motor study. If I want to adjust traces right next to the trace label, there's a little blue line hidden there. You can just click and drag that, and that allows you to move things around on your screen if you want to adjust the layout or um, where traces are shown. And again, to move any cursors, I can move them with the pink knob. Pushing the pink knob will um, select the cursor and then turning the pink knob will move that cursor or just click the cursor with your mouse and drag left to right to put the cursor where you want it. The green um, shaded area shows you your range of your reference values. So you can see how close you are to uh, normal or abnormal. Once you're happy with your responses, you can measure your distances and either put those in with the stim troller by pushing the stem one button and turning the knob or just typing in on the keyboard. The number keys are always focused on the distance field, so all you have to do is type in the distance that you measure and hit, hit enter, and that gives you your velocity here. When you hover over a reference value, it's going to actually show you that green bar that we saw when we were moving cursor, so you can see your, your reference range to see how close you, your result is to normal or abnormal. Um, when I'm happy with these responses, I can go ahead and go on to my next test. Let's say I wanted to retest my median wrist. All I have to do is either hit store until it's the highlighted site or just click it with my mouse. And now that it's selected, I can just start stimulating again and go ahead and see if I can get a better response. Um, if I want to go and pick a different, different response, once, once it's selected, I can hit F4 on the base unit. That'll bring up my trace history which brings up these radio buttons. I have this, there's different trace history op options. I'm just showing them one at a time. So what this allows me to do is just by hovering a radio button, 
I can show any other trace compared with the selected trace and decide whether I like it better. So I can select that one, and now I can say maybe I want this one. And then F4 again will turn off your trace history. So it's very easy to go back and restim a site. Um, you can either, even um, do another trial. So let's say we wanted to maybe move an electrode and see if we can get a better response on our wrist. So what we can do here is right under that site we have a cogwheel, a plus T, and a trace history. The cogwheel is just the site settings. Um, the plus T gives us a new trial. So I'm going to hit plus T. That, that starts a new trial. It saved that previous trial. Now I can go ahead and, and see if I can get any, any better response. So I'll go ahead and uh, take a look at this and let's just say that that was the best response I could get with that new um, placement of electrodes. So now I can go ahead and go back and look at where it says T2 and compare T1 to T2 and decide which one I like best. I'm going to go ahead and stay with T1 and that's the trial that will be shown. In review, it, it highlights that T1 in yellow so you know that you did more than one trial on that particular site. We can now move on to the next test. We're happy with these responses so I'm just going to go to next on the base unit or you can hit the number two key on your stem troller with these settings, um, or just go to your study window and pick your ne next test. If the test isn't in your study window yet, just go to the navigator, which is always F, well, always F7, and go pick the next test you want to do. I'm going to go ahead and go to median sensory, and we'll go ahead and start stimulating, um, move the electrodes to the, um, in this case, we're doing median sensory to the second digit, and we're just doing a wrist site. Now you can actually have additional sites set up hidden, so if you most often just do one side on a median sensory or wrist, for example, that's all you'll see, just to keep it simple. And if on occasion you want to do additional sites on that test, you can have those as hidden sites. So up in the top right corner of the trace window, we have some buttons. If you see an eye here, that means there's a hidden sites for this test. Clicking the eye unhides those sites. Now I can see I will do a wrist, an elbow, axilla, and herbs point. I can do one or all of those sites. Clicking the eye again will hide those sites. So now I'm going to go ahead and stimulate. Again, I'm showing trace history, so I'm seeing my previous stem sites and they disappear in the background. Just an easy way to compare to, to your previous responses. Um, the other thing we have in sensories that's a little bit different than motors is F1 is now improved. What improved does is it tries to subtract out any um, artifact or 60 cycle from the baseline. So for example, like this, where we're obviously getting a lot of artifact, it'd be best to, to, to improve our technique um, or you know, reduce our impedance to get a better, better response. Um, but in the case where you may not be able to get a response um, or get a good baseline, what improve is going to do is going to subtract out that, that um, slow wave or that artifact of the baseline and give you a flatter baseline. So you can see there that really flattened out the baseline nicely and you can be a little bit more confident in that measurement because it's not measuring off of a sloped baseline. The, um, you can also average, of course. So if you push average around the base unit or in that site, we'll have the little average button here. Either one does the same thing. Um, you can average post hoc or live. So if I pushed average first and started stimulating, it'd be averaging live. If I've already stimulated three or four times, I can go ahead and turn on my trace history. And I can average, which turns the radio buttons into checkboxes. And now I can go ahead and pick multiple traces to average. So now that's an average of, of four sites. Um, again, if I'm happy with my response, in this case I had a preset distance, but if I actually had measured a different just distance in this patient, I can just type it in and hit enter. Um, just to go over a few of the other functions on the trace window, um, in NCS Plus you have a horizontal scroll across the bottom of the screen, so you can always scroll and see your full sweep from that response. Um, your gain and your sweep are at the bottom. Any number that you see on the trace window you can click on and change, either by scrolling your scroll wheel or clicking with the mouse. Um, up or down. At the top of the screen you have some quick keys and your cogwheel. Anytime you see a cogwheel in the Sierra Summit, that's the settings for that particular window. So this cogwheel is going to affect um, the settings of the entire trace window. The cogwheels under the site are the settings for that specific site. The other buttons we have in the top are just some quick keys um, just to make life simple. So if you had stimulated something out of order, the first button is sort traces by latency. It's just going to sort all your different traces in order of latency and relabel them accordingly. 
the second button to swap sides. That way you can, if you had accidentally tested the right hand, but you had selected the, the, the left nerve, clicking swap sides moved all that data to the left side. Swipping, uh, clicking swap sides again moves it back to the right side. Next button is insert a site. So if I want to add a site on the fly, maybe I want to do like a mid forearm site for some reason, um, and it's not one of my hidden sites, I can just click add site, and I can say I'm going to add a stem site, pick the site I want to add. If it's not on this list, all I have to do is click the stem plus and type in whatever site I want. Once that's added, it gives me a segment as well if I want it. I can uncheck it if I don't, and I can hit OK, and now it gave me a, a site. Now I can do a mid forearm site on this test. This will just be for this one patient because um, it was just an added site on the fly. The next button over, again, is my hidden site, so how I can hide and unhide sites. And then I have my, my uh, linked gain and sweep. So if I have multiple sites on the trace window, I can decide whether they all have the same gain and sweep, or I can uncheck these and have different sweeps and gains per site on the trace window. And then again, the main cogwheel are all the different settings for this trace window. Um, and we won't get into that into much detail in this video. But this is how you set up all the different um, settings for the trace window. And again, for the individual sites. Now, in the site cogwheel, <clears throat> you have some functions that are helpful. These are our different trace history options. So you can show all traces at the same time when you turn on trace history five at a time or just one at a time. Um, you can move a site from one test to a different test. You can delete trials, delete all trials. Um, your improve function is here. You can invert a trace, um, save a threshold for averaging, etc. Um, I'm going to demonstrate the move feature really quickly. Let's just say that this was an ulnar sensory, not a median sensory, but I accidentally tested it on the median test. All I have to do is go to the site, pick the cogwheel, and select move. And I need to make sure that, before I do this, I need to make sure that I have the test that I, it actually was in my study window. So in this case, I said this was an ulnar test. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my navigator, and I'm going to pick the ulnar um, test and add it to my study window. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the ulnar sensory. And now I can go back. Uh, actually, I did the median again. Sorry about that. Let's do the ulnar. So now I can go back to the median sensory and I can say this, this site was actually the owner. So I'm just going to go into the cogwheel and say move, and I'm going to tell it to move it to the owner sensory wrist and hit OK. And now I've, I've moved that site from where I originally stimulated it to the new location, which was the owner sensory wrist. If I want to move it back, I just go back to the cogwheel and tell it to move, and I want to now move it back to the uh, medium. Um, that is kind of the basics of NCS Plus, but again, there's quite a few ways you can set up both the tests and the result tables. Um, I'll briefly go through what, what we have in the result tables here. Uh, the result tables has a cogwheel as well. That's where all your result table settings are. You can go and um, edit your result tables from here. You can um, get in and edit your reference values from here. Um, so you can, you can do quite a bit right here from the, from the testing screen. Um, but in your results table, you're, you're seeing cursors for anything that you have results for. So if you, the reason why I only have two cursors here is because I'm just looking for a peak latency and a peak to peak amplitude. If I wanted to see a negative duration or, or onset latency, I would just add those, those columns to my result table, and then I would see the cursors measuring those numbers in my trace window. Um, I have a comments field. This is if I want to add a comment per site. So I can just click here, and you can have some preset comments set up in the drop down, or you can just type in. Um, any comment that you want for this specific site. I also have a notepad tab up here. The notepad are kind of commu cumulative comments for the entire test. So anything you put in the notepad, it accumulates into one note. Um, so rather than individual notes on each site, you have one note covering the entire exam. Uh, you could use this for results, um, you know, impressions, whatever you want to use it for. Um, it's, it's really just a place to easily t keep notes while you go um, in kind of a notepad fashion. Uh, you also have a left-right comparison table tab. If you've done a bilateral study, you can easily go here and you'd see the left and right side superimposed in the trace window, and you'd see the results showing the difference between the, the responses, latencies, amplitudes, etc.
Um, the graph is if you're doing any tests like H reflexes, where you want to see a graph for, you'd be able to see graphs there. Um, the and that, that's probably enough for this video. I don't want to make these too long, but hopefully that gives you a taste of how the NCS Plus works. Um, and please refer, refer to the help manual for any additional questions um, on on functionality or setup. Thank you.